This year there has been a tremendous amount of discussion in social media about giant murderous wasps uh, approaching North America, uh, and this has caused a lot of concern. Now, we have already lots of giant murderous wasps and lots of strange wasps uh, here in North America, and always have, uh, and there are two that you might find in your yard and garden here in, in Colorado. Uh, and these involve uh, one that is developing in plants, called a pigeon tremex, a horn tail, and the other is the thing that attacks it, the giant ichneumon wasp. So let's quick talk about the first group, the ones that develop in plants. There is a group of wasps called wood wasps that develop in wood. They're a kind of wood borer. They're not an important group of wood borers because they only attack trees that are nearly dead or just recently killed. Uh, they can't kill a healthy tree. They're not a primary borer. They're a secondary borer. Uh, and they are fairly bizarre looking insects. They're quite large have a cylindrical body. They don't have the little pinch that you see with the other members of this order, like a wasp or a bee or an ant. Um, they have that uh, uh, a fairly large size, and, and the name horntail is given to them is relates to a feature that they all have, be a male or a female, and that is this kind of spike on the hind end that I have illustrated with that arrow. That's the horntail they all have. In addition, the females have a structure called an ovipositor that they use to lay eggs, and that is in the form of a long spine, a long spike that extends from the back of their body, and to many people is perceived as being some sort of scary looking stinger. These are insects that cannot, will not, are incapable of stinging, uh, but they look pretty strange. The young stage of a horn tail is going to develop within wood. Uh, it's one of many kinds of wood borers, uh, and the, the larvae can be distinguished from other kind of wood borer larvae by having a little head, that little round head. Uh, the other kinds of borers we have don't have a distinct head area like that. Um, say a beetle uh, borer, like a round-headed borer or flat-headed borer. They're legless. They tend to be cylindrical body form. The holes they make are fairly cylindrical uh, in form as well. And when they have progressed through their entire development within the tree, they will pupate and then emerge ultimately as an adult. And we see an adult that is chewing its way out of the tree for on the picture on the left. The hole that they exit from, perfectly round. They're the only ones that make a perfectly uh, round exit hole among the borers that we have. And some of them are about the size of a pencil in terms of diameter. And there are ten species of horntails that are native to Colorado. Nothing new. I've always been here. Uh, all but one of them develop in, in dying, near dead, recently killed conifers, pines mostly. Uh, and so we will find more of these. There are more species of them you're going to find in forested areas of the state than elsewhere. But there is one species that develops on a different kind of plant, and that's the one called the pigeon tremex. Uh, Tremex columba, uh, and this develops in hardwood trees, and this is the one that we might see in yards and gardens far more likely than the others. Uh, it is the only horntail in Colorado that develops in deciduous hardwood trees. The kinds of trees it might be found in would be a dying maple or a dying elm or a dying uh, ash tree. Uh, the females, as you can see, have that really nice spike coming off the hind end that scares people but that is going to be used to lay eggs, both the male and the female. You can see that little point, the, the horn tail here too. So the female inserts eggs using that ovipositor underneath the bark. They will only lay eggs in trees that are in rough shape, that have low moisture content. This tree right here she's laying eggs in, that if you, if you were to go just below where this picture is, it's been totally beaten up by weed whacker, this ash tree. Also, Horntails introduce, uh, through their ovipositor, fungi that then cause uh, infection of a white rot fungus uh, within the tree. This, this uh, helps decay the tree and makes it more suitable for the developing young. Sometimes the females, after inserting their ovipositor and laying their eggs, can't get out. So every once in a while you'll see some that are stuck in the tree, still stuck there with their ovipositor. Picture on the right, there's four of them. But if everything goes well, 
the egg hatches, the young develops within the wood. Uh, uh, about a year later, uh, everything is done, and it will turn into a pupal stage, emerge as an adult, come out one of those uh, nice little round holes that we talked about. One generation a year. Now, there are a couple of things that will attack the developing pigeon tree max within a, within a tree, but the most spectacular of these is one called the giant ichneumon wasp that only attacks the young stage of the pigeon tree max. A huge wasp uh, that has a body that might be an, over an inch long, the body, and that has these long tails off the hind end. And collectively, this, this insect may be four, four or five inches long in some cases. So here's a couple that Master Gardeners uh, sent pictures in not too long ago. And you can see a very impressive wasp that the tail is going to be the structure that is used to insert eggs through the bark into the tree onto the developing uh, pigeon tree mix. So this wasp can detect the presence of developing pigeon tree mix in, in a tree. They're originally attracted to trees by the odors of that white rot fungus that the uh, adult introduced. So, so there are odors of trees that are infested with these insects. But then the female can detect the exact location of the developing pigeon tree mix larva, which may be an inch or more deep in the tree. And then she sets up and drills to that larva to lay an egg on it. So there are some fantastic videos on this whole process. Uh, so, so one, when I was just searching uh, to see how they find the host, I, I search Megarissa host location. Megarissa is the name of these giant ichneumon wasps. And a great video came up here. Uh, so she drills through the bark to reach uh, the larva. And you can see there on the right, we had one that was develop, uh, that was in the process of laying its, its eggs uh, on the, uh, the young by drilling to it. Um, it has those long tails that I mentioned before, uh, and the tails are actually three parts. Two of the parts are sheaths that are strictly supportive that help guide the ovipositor. The ovipositor is thinner uh, than the hair on your head, but that is what is actually drilling through the wood. It's a two-part drill and a tube. So a two-part drill that can, can cut through wood. Uh, when it reaches the pigeon tree max larva, it, it punctures it, it injects a little bit of toxin to paralyze it, and then retracts and lays an egg on it. And the young of this wasp will then consume and ultimate uh, consume the, the living, for a while, pigeon tree mix larva, ultimately killing it. And instead of having a pigeon tree mix come out next year, another one of these comes out. And, and the whole process of watching how that ovipositor can drill through wood and then how it lays an egg onto that uh, larva of the pigeon tree mix. I, I did Megarissa larva as a video, as a search, and, and uh, came up with a wonderful little clip about two and a half minutes on that. And there is a fact sheet on this. Uh, CSU's, we've had a fact sheet for quite a long time on, on these two strange looking insects. So you don't need to go to upper Washington state to try to find that uh, Asian giant hornet or go to um, Asia or some other place to find some really great looking insects. We have plenty here in Colorado. We've got cicada killers. We've got tarantula hawks. But we also have these two insects that are perhaps a lot more likely to be seen for most of you if you're not getting out and around the state this year.